In this video, we're going to take a look at a multivariable calculus problem, namely a triple integral which involves spherical coordinates. It's definitely best done using spherical coordinates geometry because the region of integration is going to be between two spheres. Also, the integrand will be much more easily simplified if we know the equations for spherical coordinates. We'll talk about that spherical coordinates geometry today on High Peak Education. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's valuable to you. So like I already explained, we're gonna head into this integral. So let's get started with today's content. Um, I am doing cylinder, cylindrical. So on the bit paper on page 13, I did put the uh, equations for spherical coordinates. Okay, so those come off of the PDF that I sent you. So I'm just, I'm just doing this. I'm assuming that in spherical coordinates, Use spherical coordinates to evaluate the triple integral, triple integral over the region E of E to the minus X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared mm -hmm. over the square root of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared DV, where E is the region bounded by the spheres X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals four and X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals 36. Okay. So first of all, there's a lot of this x squared plus y squared plus z squared business going on. So that lends itself to spherical coordinates. Okay, so hopefully you can see that in spherical coordinates, that's definitely one of the equations we want to be aware of. That rho squared, which by the way, is kind of like the spherical coordinates radius. Mm -hmm. So here's rho. That's going to be given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's essentially the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So that's, that's the first thing. Second thing is, when we have these regions, you know, we want to think about, like, sort of bounds for the regions. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we kind of talked about this last time, that mm -hmm. we, we want to sort of sketch. Now, by the way, when, when you sketch in this case, I would say it's, you could sketch it by hand, but let me see if I can just come up with this from online. Region between two spheres. Okay, and by the way, let's assume also the two concentric spheres are um, at the same, have the same origin, mm -hmm. okay? So they have the same origin. So I, I found something that hopefully will work. Okay, so this is obviously done by a graphic artist, so it, looks a lot better than I could draw by hand. Okay, so anyway, there it is. All right, so there it is. And then let's have a think. So this one has what for its row radius? That's row equals two. Do you see that? If oh, you go yeah, back, if you go back to this equation. Yeah, it's two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so row squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that means this radius right here, mm -hmm. so it's r inner, you might call it, mm -hmm. is equal to 2. Mm -hmm. And then this radius out to here mm -hmm. is going to be what? 6. Right. r outer is equal to 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there we go. And then the region E is just between. Okay. Between them. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple thoughts. First of all, Given that these are spheres, it should just kind of make sense to you that the radii do not depend upon theta or phi. Okay, so let's make sure we understand this. The um, spherical radii in this case are constant for any azimuth, azimuthal, or um, declination angle that we look so they end up being constants okay so let me explain what I'm saying here notice Rho is just gonna go from 2 to 6 mm -hmm. and let's think about why that is so the azimuthal angle is like this like if I swivel in my chair that's azimuthally Mm -hmm. By the way, sometimes, suppose you have a weather balloon that's like attached to a tether and it's like going around like in a cone shape. Mm -hmm. Something that goes around in a cone shape is sweeping through all azimuthal angles, 
Okay. But it's say it's staying at the same declination angle. In other words, it's staying at the same angle. Yeah, so it's just going like that in a cone. Now, by the way, if a weather balloon was, let's say, tethered to a, um, a string, also its three-dimensional radius would stay constant, namely its rho. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anytime you're dealing with a cone geometry, the cone is sweeping through all azimuthal angles, which, by the way, theta here is what we would call the azimuthal angle. Okay. Okay, so azimuthal angle, whereas phi here would be what we call the declination angle. Okay? The declination. Yeah, declination is just a fancy way of saying if you look straight up at the sun, straight above you, that's phi equal to zero. If you look straight on the horizon, that's phi equal to pi over two. Pi over and if you look straight at the ground, that's phi equals pi. So when you do a full integration of declination, you only integrate from zero to pi. Okay. But when you integrate around an azimuth, you integrate from zero to two pi. To two pi. Does that make sense? My question is here. Okay. I'm gonna ask you because I see that most of my um, my other ones in the coordinates in the cylindrical coordinates too. The bound for t for theta for t. How do you pronounce that word? Theta. Theta, the angle? Theta. 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 You have to theta. have an H in there. Theta. Yeah, theta. My first language is Spanish. Okay. So okay. I mix the words. And yeah. It's, yeah. It's weird. Theta. Theta. So is theta always bounded from zero to two pi when it's a cylinder, when it's a circle? So let's put it this way. As long as you're not just doing like a wedge, then uh -huh. you would go all the way around. So you would go zero to two pi. So let's put it this way, in most cases in this class, so like 80% of the cases, you do go zero to two pi. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. E is gonna be, and remember, I always recommend do the inequalities before you do the actual integrals. Mm -hmm. So think about it, it's gonna be the, the spherical radii are gonna be, so think about this, in this case, rho is not a function of theta and phi right? Because they're just constant. It's not a function of theta and phi. So that's why they're just constants. But the thing is, we're going to go around a full azimuthal circle. Mm -hmm. Azimuthal. There we go. Circle. Just had to spell it right. So that means from theta going from zero to two pi. To two pi. But then the declination angle, we're going to go from top to bottom. So, a half you know, circle. right. So top to bottom. Okay. Now, by the way, one thing I want to quickly note in math, we usually do the declination angle from here down to the bottom is zero to pi. Okay. Some situations they do the, listen to me, the elevation angle. Now the elevation angle usually starts zero at the horizon. And then you go up to pi over two. Does that make sense? you go from like straight on to up to there but don't get confused because elevation starts zero at the ground goes up whereas declination starts like straight above you and goes down does that make sense okay. mm -hmm. so just understand the coordinates and by the way that's why i pasted this image down here so you see this image mm -hmm. down here right uh -huh. this image is meant to be sort of a three-dimensional depiction of how does some point out there in 3D space, X, Y, Z, how is it defined in terms of rho, theta, and phi? Well, what you do is you go outward a radius of rho, which by the way is the same thing as going radius r in the X, Y plane, then going up z. You see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you sweep along an azimuthal circle a certain theta radians. Okay. So, Typically, the positive x direction would be like, say, straight east. Mm -hmm. So you sweep counterclockwise from east to wherever you're pointed at. And then what you do is you go from straight above you and you let it rotate down until you're looking straight at the object. So again, imagine this is like a weather balloon tethered mm -hmm. to like a string or something. That's a good way to think about it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so now we've got our bounds. Two to six, 
0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi in terms of rho, theta, and phi. So we can go ahead and set up our triple integral. Now, by the way, this triple integral, notice that it, it's kind of set up for success for us because this right here is just rho squared. And then this right here is also a rho squared. But rho squared square rooted is just going to be rho. Mm -hmm. But here's something else that's quite important. Do you see this right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we should probably go over that. A differential volume element, typically in Cartesian, is dz, dy, dx. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing a differential volume element in spherical... It's always rho squared times sine phi times uh, d rho d theta d phi. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's kind of the idea. Uh, yes. Or sorry. Actually, they did d phi d theta, but it doesn't really matter on the, on the end there. d phi d theta. Okay? Mm -hmm. But here's, here's one way to think about this. This would have units of cubic meters if you were in physics, right? Uh -huh. Meters times meters times meters. By the way, most mathematicians never talk about a science analogy, and this is where I think that they could use a little help from us, that those who know science. So volume is definitely cubic meters, right? Mm -hmm. Now think about this. This is units of radians both the phi and the theta. Mm -hmm. So remember, radians are sort of unitless, right? Yeah. Okay, like, if you recall angular velocity in physics, you take radians per second times radius, you get meters per second for the linear or the tangential velocity on the edge of a circle, right? Mm -hmm. But when you do radians per second times meters for the radius, it's like, where the radians go? We intentionally sweep it under the rug because radians, in some sense, are just a counting number. They're, uh -huh. they're unitless. But the reason I bring that to your attention is that sine of phi here is a pure number. It's no units. But think about this. Rho, d rho, has units of meters. So you have to have something out the front that has units of square meters. Okay. So that's why, listen to me, the differential element that you have to integrate over is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, which is exactly what they're showing here. So this right here becomes the dv. Does that make sense? So that's important because a lot of people forget parts of that that I've worked with. Now notice they're going to simplify this by the following thing that we also talked about last time. This right here. Remember this right here? This... uh business mm -hmm. about you can separate integrals. Yep. So let me, let me bring that over to bear here. So let me paste this up here and make it a little smaller. Okay. So don't forget, if you have two functions multiplied by each other, but mm -hmm. they're essentially separate, separate functions of separate variables, you can just break that multiplication up into separate integrals, which is really convenient. So if you have a function of y times a function of x, and the bounds are just constants, you can just do separate integrals. Mm -hmm. So here, they're using the integral separation trick. So this right here is the integral uh, separation uh, trick. Again, I call it a trick, but it's really a property, right? Now notice, all this in here is all in terms of rho. This right here is theta, but that's a product. Mm -hmm. So, and then we've only got a d theta. Mm -hmm. So we can just take this part out here, the outermost integral, that's this, mm -hmm. and make it this integral. Yep. Then we can take the second integral, which is in terms of phi, mm -hmm. so that's this part and this part, and make it this integral. So that's a relatively straightforward integral. And then we've got to be careful. So we've got a bunch of rows running around. We've got to go from 2 to 6. And then the square root of rho squared, that comes from down here. The square root of rho squared is just rho. 
But then you've got row squared here over row. Mm -hmm. So you just get row out the front. So it's this. So this is the last one in terms of the rows, right? In terms of this, 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 and this part, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just the product of three separate integrals. Now, the integral of d theta is just, from 0 to 2 pi, is just 2 pi. This yes. part right here. The square root of a, a square root of a sure. row squared, that is row, then I have the row on the top that is the square. Mm -hmm. First, first of all, hopefully you see this is this part deals with row. This part mm -hmm. deals with row, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of the pink part, it's two to six, e to the minus rho squared. The square root of rho squared is just going to be rho. Yeah. Then we've got rho squared d rho. Mm -hmm. But then this part right here, rho squared over rho just becomes row upstairs mm -hmm. so if it becomes row upstairs then you're just going to get row basically out the front so you're just going to have the integral from two to six of row e to the minus row squared d row and that's how they get this right here okay mm -hmm. now this one's actually a pretty straightforward integral because oh sorry does that make sense question on that mm -hmm. okay so this one's pretty straightforward integral. The integral of d theta here in red is just going to be theta <laughs> mm -hmm. from 0 to 2 pi. And you plug in the bounds, it's just 2 pi. That's almost trivial. That's that's pretty easy integral. Mm -hmm. The blue one, what's the integral of sine? Well, it's negative cosine, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's evaluated from 0 to, to pi. Oh. Now, remember, if you've got the negative cosine of of uh of phi from phi equals pi to phi equals zero remember you still have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus still got to do upper minus lower so let's leave the negative sign out the front so let's do negative and it's cosine of pi minus cosine of zero but what is the cosine of pi remember unit circle it's negative one right okay so remember your unit circle, right? Yep. Negative. So it's I have my same thing here. It's like over there, right? So it's mm -hmm. negative one zero, yep. right? So for cosine, it's going to be negative one. I I still need the, this minus out the front. So I got negative one, and then minus. What's the cosine of zero? One. Now notice you're going to get negative two there, with mm -hmm. a minus out the front. So that ends up being two. Okay. So they did. That's how they get this right here. Okay. okay. So they're skipping steps. How do you integrate this, which is here in pink? Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually a relatively straightforward U substitution. So all things considered, this is just about as straightforward as U substitutions go. So you can say, let U equal negative rho, oh, sorry, negative rho squared. Mm -hmm. DU is negative two rho D rho. But notice we need to get rho d rho in here. Rho d rho. So we need to div multiply this whole equation by negative a half. So we're going to have negative a half du is rho d rho. And then now we're set up for success because that's going to pop in there. Now, what that means is this integral, and by the way, we'll, we'll go back to change the bounds in just a moment, right? Mm -hmm. I always recommend that's the last thing, but it's the important thing. So negative a half du comes in for rho d rho. So we just have du with a negative one half out the front. Then uh, in terms of this u being rho, I'm sorry, negative rho squared, that's e to the u, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I think we're all set except for the bounds. Now remember, for the bounds, we need to plug in to the definition. Oh, that's right. So u lower is going to be negative 2 squared. Mm -hmm. Now be careful with the signs here because it minus the row is like that. So 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be negative 4. Mm -hmm. So you see that? Yes. Then, let me do this in orange. 
6, again, we put that in here into the definition. So u upper, we go negative 6 squared, and that's negative 36. Okay? So that's our bounds. Okay. So I'm hoping that that's what they have here. Um, they just integrated in terms of rho. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be end up being the same thing. If you change to u, you don't need to change back to rho. Okay. He, here, they kept it in terms of rho. Mm -hmm. But if the great thing about a u substitution integral with, de with bounds is you don't need to change back to the original variable. Oh, okay. Unlike an indefinite integral, when you do u substitution, you have to change back to rho. In this mm -hmm. case, you just calculate the number. Oh, okay. So in this case, we could just calculate the number. So this is going to be relatively straightforward. So I'll switch to black to finish up here. So this is just going to be negative a half. And the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this is e to the u. u upper is negative 36. And then u lower is negative 4. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be negative a half e to the negative 36 power minus e to the negative 4 power. Okay. Now, hopefully, that's what they got down here. You see that? Mm -hmm. That is what they got down here. So we've got negative a half e to the negative 36. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then, um, by the way, it's you could distribute this through here. Mm -hmm. So then you get a plus in the second term, right? Okay. Because it'd be negative a half e to the minus 36 plus one half mm -hmm. e. To, so I'll just write that in a minute. Plus one half e to the minus four. Okay. So that's what they get. That's exactly what they get here. Then the last step is to just multiply all those. Okay. So 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. Mm -hmm. But then times that 1 half is going to be 2 pi out the front. Mm -hmm. Then notice that usually it's nicer to put the positive term before the negative term. So that's why we're going to have e to the minus 4 minus e to the minus 36. Okay. And then this would be your answer. Okay. Okay. Good. Now that's an exact value in terms of E. Of course, mm -hmm. you could get an approximate if you use your calculator for what the value of E is, right? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So how are you going to use this content in your life? How are you going to take something that could be sophisticated that even some modern calculators or computers can't really integrate how are you going to be able to use spherical coordinates to help you simplify things let us know down in the comments let us know down in the comments also what kind of videos you want to see going forward in the future thank you for watching high peak education please smash that like button as you enjoy this content please share this video out to your social networks our social media links are also in the description we really appreciate you consuming our content and we will see you in the next video